Hi everyone, so this week's video is probably going to be on something a tad different to normal and it is kind of pleco related but not specifically and is kind of a bit more catfish in general it does really equate to. So this is why I don't use gravel, I don't recommend it, I don't actually like it and I know it's everywhere in the stores and it's one of the most common substrates but just because it is doesn't mean it should be used or is it is the best substrate to use and people will argue that Corydoras are found on gravel and if you discuss with people that actually find Corydoras in the wild and actually um, work with them in the wild um, they will actually say a lot of them tend to be found well are found on sand or they move between the two so sand is where they feel most comfortable and they are able to actually dig in so you can see that some will actually quite a few will actually stick their whole head in and this is an important behaviour for them, so it should be encouraged. So, um, using gravel is actually a hazard, and not many people think about it, but quite a few fish can have particular issues with it. And these are any that deal with the substrate in some form or way. Um, so, the mo main hazard is choking. So this is also common in cichlids. Um, apart from, I'd say, the only two that are unlikely to do with the substrate in any form or matter would be um, angelfish and discus. The others will dig at it, move things around, sift it. And it's quite common to see, especially in rift valley cichlids, or anything that does major burrowing, they can get impaction. Um, so basically, if they... Um, ingest it they cannot pass it back out and is stuck in the gut it can cause what looks like bloat but it won't pass or it could cause other issues where it is sort of moving into like in the way of other organs and it can lead to death um also with choking if a fish is it usually happens where the fish is smaller um when it's and it's put in that aquarium and it doesn't happen for quite a while and then suddenly which is big enough and it can it's starting to actually be able to move the substrate around and then it gets stuck in the mouth and actually trying to move remove it can lead to breaking the jaw dislocating jaw and fish bones are very delicate in quite a few species so it's not really worth the risk um so i've seen it quite a lot in goldfish um, where people keep them gravel so often because it's cheap and easy and people warned about sand. Sand is easier to pass through the gut, it is smaller grains and when fish they will tend to, they pick it up and then sort of uh, regurgitate it out or out of the gills. It's not harmful and you can get finer grades, you can get larger grade sands um, but yeah, so that is the main hazard and I see this all the time especially yeah with goldfish it is something really common and whether you want to go bare bottom or sand, it's up to you. Um, I think because these fish dig, it's better to go with a um, sandy substrate, something more natural. So next hazard is that the, it can damage the barbels. So the barbels are these anatomical features on a lot of fish. Um, specifically catfish, this is an issue with where they have these barbels around the mouth. And these are the long trailing like whiskers that catfish are named after. Not all catfish have them particularly to any extent. Um, so these, when they're digging, can get trapped. They are exposed to anything in the gravel and you do get, especially with harsher gravels, it can erode the um, barbels. It can lead to infection and rot of the barbels if they do get trapped or damaged. So the next part is what what does it do with behaviour? So the thing is with gravel is it prevents fish altogether from burying. And there's quite a lot of fish that do it. So I keep aspirin a day, which is your banjo catfishes, and that is a major part of their behaviour. They all do it to some extent. They will sort of charge themselves at the substrate just to sit underneath. And as a natural behaviour, it's good for them to do so. Um, it's also seen in puffers and this video is um, by Straight Talking Fish, um, also from uh, Pufferfish uh, Worldwide oh. Enthusiasts um, and this is showing the digging behaviour of puffers and quite a few do it to different reasons, maybe if they're nervous I believe smaller ones will do it when they are and it is a natural behaviour that shouldn't be prevented if they're going into gravel it's something they can't do or they're going to struggle to do it but they're still going to try. 
So it's not really done fair on the fish because it is something they're naturally doing just to hide. So they don't want to be exposed and quite a few fish feel calmer that way even if you do want to see them. The next one is sand sifting and this is quite a few fish do it and especially as I said above the cichlids, well most cichlids, goldfish, most carp do it, they're well known for doing it. And also like with, well a lot of cichlids are named after it so geophagus means earth eater so they are literally sifting through the earth naturally. But other fish will do it picking up the substrate, moving it around and this is a natural behaviour that should be encouraged. We shouldn't prevent it just because we want a different substrate that is more aesthetically pleasing to us or because we like it, it's easier or something that a lot of people say or I've been using it for 50 years and it hasn't caused me issues but what about the welfare of the fish? And this also goes on to digging behaviour. Digging is extremely common in a lot of fishes the only fishes that probably have no interaction with the substrate are, other than for breeding, would be um, your tetras, something mid top layer fish, um, quite maybe quite a few killifish, although some will be quite a few will benefit from a PD uh, bed to breed in. Um, minnows, danios, raspora, quite a few won't interact with the substrate but it's always beneficial to have uh, something like say if you're wanting to breed them look at that but bare bottom is always an alternative so the final thing is waste and you notice whenever people are gravel cleaning and they put it in and it comes up like a cloud of COOP um, that is felt and that is trapped underneath. The thing is with sand and very fine gravels is that fine gravels is basically a, a sand so they prevent it from the waste from going down below as easily. You will have to turn over sands just in case but um, waste does get trapped really easily and I find it actually difficult to get all of it out whereas some sort of sand is up there on the top unless you have particularly digging fish but they will encourage it into the water column um, if they're digging through the sand it will then move it into the water column so the filter could pick up more easily but with gravel it does get trapped more easily and you get layers of waste just there and a lot of people find it more difficult actually to maintain a gravel substrate it is even more difficult if you have a grid under there for under gravel filtration because you've got another thing to prevent it coming up and I find whenever I've dealt with them you lift up the grid and there is a solid mat of waste I find them a lot more difficult so a lot of people actually find that bare, uh, um, bare bottom is easier for pick up waste because there is nothing to trap it but a lot of people also find sand because it prevents it from being stuck at the bottom I've never had an issue of sand I've never had a lot of people say oh you get gas pockets and all of this I do have burying fish I do have really digging fish so that might be part of the thing but I've never had Malaysian trumpet snails that are the major thing people use and they do overpopulate if you're overfeeding but other than that I've never had an issue with sand I've never seen true issues especially when people say oh you get sulphur coming up and stuff like that so anyway uh, thank you for watching if you like my videos please um, well, comment subscribe etc anyway thank you for watching